just opened up uh, the differential for the G8 and yeah not good signs in there so uh, that's why I bought a new carrier uh, LSD this time ah look at here Wow <laughs> yeah that wasn't good at all labeled the uh, caps bearing caps so don't get them mixed up put some uh, red paint on the spacer on the right hand side as I'm looking at it and the bearing race the back race uh, looks like spacers are similar but you can't you know until I get them out and mic them it'd be hard to tell if they're the same which I doubt that they are exactly the same so I don't want to get them mixed up and I know which one goes on which side to get a good start so I'll let that dry just a little bit and then I'll continue on so I saw somebody and I, I can't remember the the YouTube uh, name but uh, I'd give them credit if I could but they talked about one way to easily get these out without putting a spreader on the case um and getting a you know taking a little tension off which you you can even just pry them out but uh take a a rag and feed it in there uh back to the pinion gear and then rotate it and when that rag gets between the pinion gear and um the ring gear it'll actually push the ring gear away and slide that out of the you know out of the uh out of the housing so we're gonna give that a try i won't be able to can't hold my phone and do it but let's see what it does okay that's actually working pretty well you can see the old shirt i've got using as a rag has come through at the bottom it's, it's starting to get a little thicker so it's, it's going to continue to come but you can see now uh you know it's moved moved the bearing off the you know these two faces were flush that uh, shim and the bearing and I don't know if you can see now there's quite a bit of gap there you can see better from here that it's it's moved forward so that and uh, you know you couldn't turn the um, you know the pinion by hand but uh, just tapping on it uh, with a light hammer uh, not not really beating on it just tapping on it moved it out uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it on through and and pull it out okay uh, turned it just a little more and it's it's just almost out I can just grab now I grab the because the uh, the pinion no longer engages with the ring gear so I just grabbed on the the uh, shirt the rag and pulled on it just a little bit and it pulled it almost to the edge I stopped right there so I could grab a quick little video of of, of that and uh, I'll go ahead and pull it the rest of the way out then all right so that came out very easy uh, just a little light tug on that rag after that and it slid right on out didn't uh, didn't make the uh, spacers go flying I, I was able to make sure I got the right uh, Got them out with the right uh, direction. One thing I'll I'll show because I wanted to verify the uh, there's a chamfer on one side of that shim, and the chamfer uh, goes towards the outside of the case, uh, towards the axle uh, on both sides. So uh, in case somebody didn't get a chance to check that whenever it came flying out. That's the way they go back in is like that with the chamfer on that side. I'm going to put a little divot in the top end of this boat so that my puller boat will try to ride into it and not, not off of the head. 
you could do it on a drill press, but I happen to have my little lathe here, so I'm going to use it instead. See if that'll get it. All right. Well, here's something I didn't count on. I'd seen people um, using a, uh, you know, uh, a bearing separator and a press, which I was that was my plan um, to pull these off. But the bearing separator uh, won't get uh, underneath the uh, lip of the bearing. You'd be pulling on the basically the cage of the bearing and that wouldn't be a, a very good way to do it if you plan on maybe reusing the bearing uh, it's not even a good way to do it even if you're not but it's designed for a two jaw puller at least this one is uh, that can get underneath both sides so this is what I'm gonna give it a shot uh, I did take that bolt and put a little divot in the head to try to keep it centered on the on the puller uh, keep it from driving through my socket We'll see how it goes. All right, got the uh, the bolts all loose. They weren't. I, I used the impact and took them loose. None of them were tight, too tight to come off with any problem or anything. So I'll take those out and uh, work on getting that ring gear off. Uh, I don't really have anything wide enough. Uh, to use on my pre big press to press that off. So uh, I, I can add some heat to it, uh, but I don't know. I'll, I'll think about what I'm gonna do on that. Okay, that was easy. All I did was uh, screwed the, the bolts back in about halfway. Um, remember these are left-hand thread. I screwed them in about halfway uh, so they'd be engaged in the threads real good and I just took my propane torch and spun this around uh, And heated it up just warmed it really I didn't didn't even get it hot. I just warmed it up uh, and uh, then just tapped back and forth across and uh, and it It uh, didn't take much at all to get them get it to separate down and drop off that pressed on fit So I'll go ahead and take the rest of them out and take it off Okay, so got the ring off there. <laughs> Had a little bit of, uh, for a second I thought it was going to be hard to get off because that uh, spot on the housing here where it was cracked uh, was not letting it come over that. But I just uh, took a punch and just tapped it in. Actually, it's just barely on there, so it tapped in and the ring come right off. Uh, it's carnage in there. Uh, you can see pieces of spider gear there uh, and there. It's got a good picture of it. Um, so here's the the strange thing. So uh, when I got the axles out, you know, I, I really thought the axle CV joint was broke at first, uh, and thought that was all that was wrong. And uh, and when I uh, I pulled the axle out. Uh, I didn't didn't really do a lot of investigation on that axle at first, but uh, I went to the that was on the passenger side. I went to the driver side, and it was when I got the driver side axle out that I looked through the uh, uh, axle uh, housings, and I could tell then that spider gears were broke because uh, it was not straight. You know, looking through there, you could see things all out of out of Wonka. So, um, so then I thought, well, sh well crap. It, you know, I, my axle wasn't my problem; it was my um, my differential. However, I did then dig into the axle to make sure. Sure enough, the CV joint out there was broke uh, on the passenger side. So, 
I'm not sure which came first or if if the axle CV joint existed maybe uh, and then just coincidentally this you know grenaded uh, and maybe it went then or I, I don't know it's kind of I can't see the differential grenading and taking out the axle that's the CV joint so I don't know maybe somebody can leave me some comments on ideas of you know what anybody thinks would cause both failures uh, I, I can't understand what uh, would drive one to cause the other so maybe somebody can give me some insight if that's the case thanks okay I just got this, the bearings pushed on and uh, in case anybody is looking for just the right size follower uh, I had a set but nothing matched and I didn't have an old race to use so a uh, two and a quarter ID by two and a quarter OD uh, the uh, smaller end of that is just exactly that's an exhaust adapter that's just exactly the right size to uh, follow that bearing on without interference and not pushing on the cage so uh, if you can see there it's just right and uh, allows you to get it pushed all the way down flush uh, it's I mean beyond flush because it has to actually go just a little beyond flush uh, and and even if you tried pushing with something flat you'd end up pushing on the top of the cage because the top of the cage is just a right there a little uh, higher than what the race uh, of the bearing or the uh, inner well the inner race of the bearing is so you need to make sure you follow that with the right size uh, pusher or an old race will work as well I uh, cleaned all of the bolts off and uh, put them in there in, in loosely brought it up to where it was just snug uh, and then went around uh, in a star pattern and, and tightened them all up a little at a time until I got it all the way up flush and uh, and then I uh, I torqued uh, torqued them all uh, down uh, and then and then took them all back out because I need to get it setting good flush flat and and even and then uh, I needed to uh, take the threads and clean them one more time and put the Loctite on them and then uh, reinstall them and torque them that uh, after that with the uh, uh, to the torque uh, specification because you don't want to be pulling against that uh, I, I would think I, I wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to be pulling that up trying to torque uh, set your torque setting on it so I want to make sure I was all the way up and flat uh, before I ever uh, came in to torque them and uh, you can see um, what I was talking about maybe on that uh, pressing that on if you tried to press it flush you can see you know you wouldn't get it down all the way uh, and you know that that could uh, cause some trouble I think one thing I forgot to mention is that I am uh, reusing my original bearings uh, this differential only had 32,000 miles on it um, whenever it grenaded uh, and that was pretty much my fault anyway because I flashed it uh, and, and it just that with the stock uh, differential that was not going to hold it so anyway um, these bearings are in good shape one thing I did is I uh, uh, I put them in a uh, first I had a jar of uh, brake clean um, filled it up about that full and put them in there one at a time and shook the jar agitated it a whole lot um, you could see it start to get some color you know out of the bearings and that was after I'd already sprayed them with brake clean um, and and I uh, took it out cleaned it uh, dumped that out put fresh in again cleaned it second time with that and uh, there until I didn't see any color coming out of it uh, dumped that out um, did that with both of them and then um, I uh, had some synthetic synthetic uh, 
um, zero, I think it's uh, zero, um, zero 020, I believe. But anyway, it was just some synthetic oil, uh, new oil that I uh, dipped them in, uh, made sure they got good and soaked in it, uh, and then checked them for any gritty feel or anything. It was They were silky smooth, so uh, I wrapped them in some non-lint cloth until I, or not lint paper until I got it, uh, got them installed. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty sure those bearings are good. And the reason why I did that though, uh, is I, um, if you use used bearings, uh, usually you can use your same, from what I've read, I, I'm not an expert again, uh, you, you should be able to use your same, uh, shims hopefully and get the right pattern. Um, if definitely, if I'd have went with new bearings, I'd have had to start it over with my shim pack and, and, uh, uh, probably had to make some adjustments and stuff. So uh, I'm hoping that um, I can put these in, put the same shims back in and get a, uh, a good pattern on it and call that a day. So that's the reason why I'm reusing those bearings.